with the second part of the fundamental theorem under our belt. Computing definite integrals is as easy or as difficult as computing antiderivatives. Let's look at a few examples. Let's find the definite integral from zero to pi divided by two of the cosine of x dx. Well, hopefully we recognize that the sine of x is an antiderivative of the cosine. And we evaluate it from zero to pi divided by two. That is, it's the sine of pi divided by two minus the sine of zero which is one. So there's our first uh, definite integral successfully computed using the fundamental theorem. When you're using the fundamental theorem, you never have to bother with those plus c terms. It's true that the sine of x isn't the only antiderivative. The sine of x plus c is also an antiderivative for any constant c. But you see what happens. We'll have a c here and a negative c here. And our C's will cancel each other out. So if we're using the fundamental theorem, we just use the simplest antiderivative we have. No need to add any sort of constant. Example two, the integral from, let's say from negative one to three of four x squared dx. Depending on how confident we're feeling, we might need to do a little work computing this antiderivative. x cubed is almost what we want in the sense that it will give us an x squared when we differentiate it, but we don't want that one third, and we do want a four. I can't emphasize enough that this only works when we're adding constants. I know I've said this before, but if we multiply by a constant one third, it sticks around. If we multiply by a constant four, it sticks around.
here's an antiderivative. Don't need to bother with that plus C as long as we're using the fundamental theorem. So let's see, three cubed is 27. 27 times four is 108. So 108 over 3, negative 1 cubed is negative 1. So our negative signs cancel. And we get that. I think that's enough examples for now, but we'll be spending much of calculus two learning to take antiderivatives of more complicated expressions so that we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus.